And now, from the Marquee Media Studio inside Mark Tank, it's the Mark Haney Show. Yes, this is the Mark Haney Show on a mission to ignite the entrepreneurial revolution right here in the hometown we love. And we do that by building the backyard advantages at the center of the backyard advantage is love, right? It's the most connected community in the world for local entrepreneurs. And we love each other, right? We love on each other. We make a lot of great introductions. We connect people. And today on the show, I am going to connect you to KJ, Kenneth Johnston. He is the founder and CEO of KJ2 Productions, a great media company here in town. And you're also going to meet uh, the founder and CEO of Dedicated Designs, Mr. Joshua Hanish. They're both in the house today. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what they're working on right now, which is Pitch Your Passion, which is really a, a very interesting concept if you are a creator, right? And uh, and you need creativity in your life. So they have something they're putting together that's really cool on that front. We'll get into that. But before we do, um, you know, I, I had my buddy Jay Izell, who's he's Natoma Wealth Management. He's one of these guys that helps you make a plan if you're going to have some real success in your life, if you're going to have a big exit in your business, if you are going to, you know, really have a, a maybe a big payday, you want to plan ahead so that you don't pay as much taxes and you can handle it uh, most appropriately. And so I've, I've been asking Jay these questions. And so the question I asked him uh, recently is, am I prepared to step away from what I'm working on right now? And kind of an interesting question because emotionally, we are, uh, you know, there's things to think about, but there's also, have I made the plan? So listen to JSL's response. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the question number three out there. And this is one that I think a lot of people would be thinking about. Am I prepared <laughs> to step away? Right, yeah. So so think about a founder, you know, 30 years ago that started a business. Uh, most entrepreneurs that we know are grinders. They just work and work and work to the point even where there might be some sacrifices along the way. And if now you're thinking of, well, what do I do tomorrow after I exit? Do I get up and have a cup of coffee? Am I thinking about starting up something else? Going through that qualitative exercise of saying, What's important to me? What's part of my value system that now that I might have more free time, what am I going to do to remain engaged and healthy and uh, a positive member of the community that I serve? Um, that's something that I think is missed a lot of times. As we think about transactions, it's usually the quantitative piece. What's it worth? What's the multiple? How do I exit? What's an earnout? All those different factors. But if I'm not ready to actually be gone from the business, then there's this big gap. And we see that gap that's not addressed early enough. You can have a very unsuccessful exit as a founder to where they tend to maybe flounder a little bit or try to figure out what's life look like for them after exit. Super excited today to be bringing on uh, an older friend and a little bit of a newer friend. Uh, Kenneth KJ Johnston is on the show with us. He's been on the show before. He's KJ2 Productions, and then he's brought along with him Joshua Hanna. Hanish, and uh, he's my newer friend, um, but we're getting to know each other, and it, it turns out you two actually met at GFX last year, So, uh, and you're a creative guy. You have your marketing company, too. It's uh, Dedicated Designs, right? Yeah. Yeah, so these two creatives have got together and um, are working on something called Picture Passion. I'm inspired by that, but uh, maybe let's just get a little bit of your background, Josh, and then we'll get, KJ, we'll get yeah, some of yours, absolutely. and then let's talk about what you're actually working on. Sure, yeah, so um, I, I've been in Sacramento since 2006, went to Davis, got my degree in finance, graduated in 08, when it was the worst time to have a finance degree, because oh, yeah. the Great Recession was just getting started. Um, I pivoted to teaching math and computer science, taught math and computer science for eight years, a couple years in West Sac, and then I finished my career in Rockland. Did you teach it at the high school level? Uh, I started off at high school and then I taught at Springview Middle School in Rockland. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, and left that because I was I would always have conversations with my students around, what do you wanna do for a job? Like I taught the computer the computer science class at the time. Hey, let's, let's talk about coding. And the number one benefit I always told them was, you know, how cool would it be to work from anywhere 
And as long as you got your projects done, like no one cared, like you can basically just travel and work. And one of the students was like, Mr. Hanish, like, why aren't you doing that? And I was like, that's a <laughs> great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. So um, I helped co-found a nonprofit in 2014 and really cut my teeth on marketing, getting that off the ground. So I took that knowledge with my knowledge of web design and started dedicated designs in 2018. And now we're a team of nine. We help tons of businesses here in Northern California and really all along the West Coast and a couple like internationally. And it's been a fun ride. That's, is it predominantly web design or is it a full marketing stack? Yeah, it's a full marketing stack. Um, so we primarily focus on nonprofits um, because that's just near and dear to my heart. We have a lot of for-profit clients, um, but our, our, our main focus moving forward is nonprofits. Um, and we handle everything from branding to web development. So like moving old databases over into new systems, um, web design, email marketing, PPC, like everything will full, full suite. Okay. All right. We're going to get into the project in a minute, but let's get KJ, Kenneth KJ Johnson, not to be confused with, uh, Kevin Johnson. Absolutely. You, are you going by Kenneth now or is I'm, it KJ or is it know, just kind of, this is like an ongoing, uh, transition <laughs> for me, Mark. Um, I'm trying to go by Kenneth, um, Primarily because our company is comprised of more than just myself. Mm. And I don't want to be identified as the company. Um, I want to be associated, obviously, with the company. So I'm trying to convert my name back to Kenneth. And okay. uh, it's a transition for me because I wind up calling myself KJ half the time anyway. So, um, But the artist formerly known as KJ as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, give us a little bit of your background too so that our audience uh, yeah, gets re-familiarized. You know, uh, like Josh, I mean, our transition has been very similar. And, you know, my career started, uh, I grew up in New Orleans, um, and my career started in marketing. Uh, I worked in corporate America for about six years, uh, worked in a pharmaceutical company, worked in sales. And so my primarily responsibility was, you know, selling. And, but I was always this creative person. You know, I grew up in a very creative environment. New Orleans, as you know, you know, has nothing but creatives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, dancers, musicians, artists, culinary artists. and Bourbon Street. Uh, Bourbon Street, yeah. That, that, <laughs> that's, that's what the, I think that's of. That's the culmination think, yeah, yeah. of all the art, artistic uh, endeavors, right? But the problem I saw as a kid was I saw that as a, they were peddling for small change, you know? I didn't look at that as a way of making, you know, a, a consistent living. So I kind of suppressed that creativity and decided, let me just go kind of the traditional route. I went and got my uh, undergrad degree and my master's in business and worked in corporate America for about five years. And then I had this epiphany uh, in 2008, ironically, um, <laughs> before the housing market crash, I said, you know, I'm gonna quit my job and go back to film school. Now, the irony was the timing of this was, it's up, if I had waited, you know, a month later, I probably would have never did that because the market crashed and who would have thought to walk away from a six figure job mm. and go chase a dream? So it was actually the kind of a, a blessing in disguise that it happened at that point in time because I then went back to film school. And then um, the great avenue of that is that I actually had this kind of, you know, a business acumen that I learned from, you know, marketing. Because a lot of creatives, you know, either have left brain or right brain, they don't really have both mm. mixed together. And so the fortunate thing for me is I had this business acumen foundation. So when I finished school, I really activated this opportunity to start a business and monetize a business. You know, I didn't have this ability to want to live in a room uh, or an apartment with five other guys and make YouTube videos. I had to figure out a way, how do I activate this process? And that's how KJ2 Productions was was founded. Yeah, and, and your, uh, your focus is predominantly video, is that right? Yeah, yeah. predominantly video, uh, cinematography, some photography, but we, you know, ironically, you know, what we are, you know, in a nutshell is we're storytellers. You know, we're storytellers and I, I can't, compete with everyone with one of these these days, right? You know, I, I tell my staff all the and time. For anybody with a, uh, just doing less on audio, he's holding up his phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, an iPhone is definitely, anyone with an iPhone right now is certainly our competition. Uh, okay. You know, people can yeah. make cool videos and you got TikTok out there. So, I'm, you know, we had to figure out a way, what is our differentiator? And our differentiator is that we service our clients in a way that pales in comparison to anyone else doing that. Right, we, we really take a vested interest in telling the stories of our clients. And that's what makes us different than anyone else. So you guys are at GFX mm -hmm. and Todd Bollenbach, our mutual friend, uh, 
He's uh, he's amazing, by the way. Um, he, in fact, we're he was going just out. on the podcast. Yeah, he was, and he, we're, tonight we're going out to the UCP dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. The one oh, we went nice. to, and uh, so we're going to hang out tonight. So, but you guys are at GFX, and for anybody that doesn't know what GFX is, it's this venture conference with startups and stuff. And our this year's is going to be October fifth, but last year's we had about six hundred people there, and, and you guys were both there, and you meet, and then what happens from there? Because you've got this great thing now that you've started together. Yeah, you know, it's it's always interesting how uh, good people connect with other good people. And Todd being a connector, he just happened to just introduce us. And I am one that's always looking at, you know, what people do. How does that compare to, you know, what I do as, 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 as a position and how can we somehow connect? And him and I just, you know, we really just hit it off really personally, number one, we were talking about some of the things that we did in uh, comparison, but um, I think our moral compasses were just in line, our ability to um, talk about what we did, how he started his business, reminded me a little bit of how I started my business. So there was just a lot of a lot of synergy and really how it uh, really came about. We just exchanged numbers and it probably went dormant for maybe a month, maybe. about a month or two. It was the end of the year, we were just busy. Yeah, we were just kind of doing our own thing and, and I, I reached out to him and wanted to connect with them. And, and, and really, Mark, it was just one of these things where, you know, we found a lot of synergy. Um, and in my mind, I was like, how do I put that into effect? Especially what he does complements exactly what we do. And it's from the, uh, you start thinking about the verticals that you're good at. I wanna maintain an area or a space that I'm really good at and be known as the expert in that. I'm not trying to spread myself too thin. I could try to do you know, 15 different things. But if it's not, if we're not effective as doing it, I always say, if it takes me 10 hours to do what you can do on two, there's no reason for me to do it. And I found with dedicated designs, what they did complimented us so, so well, and mm-hmm. really just hit it off from there. And, and, you know, it's actually formed a really good friendship as well. And now you've started something called pitch your passion. What pitch your passion? How did, uh, cool. I mean, it's, it's easy to remember. So do people come and pitch to you? And then you, what happens? Yeah, we, we, this brainchild came about in January of this year when I started thinking about, you know, like, like Josh and the other focus that Josh, that is synergistic with ours is that we really work a lot with our passion is working with nonprofits. These are in, you know, and, and typically in Sacramento is, is, is dumped with a number of nonprofits, right? Um, but that's where our passion is. And, you know, what we wanted to do was figure out in the small business region, the small business community, you know, I'm a small business and I know what I go through on a month to month basis, you know, things that I, I, I struggle with. So I wanted to come up with this concept of how do we help small businesses in a region and, and really focusing on businesses that may lack maybe marketing, you know, specifically. So we came up with this concept of like, we're going to go out and set these terms out there and say, okay, we want to have businesses come in and pitch their concepts to us, their product to us, their services to us. And what we're gonna provide as a, uh, uh, as two companies, is we're gonna provide a litmus of, of marketing services. Our company specifically is gonna produce media content for them. And then Josh's company, I'll let him talk about what they're gonna do, but primarily he's gonna work on, you know, whether it's web development or digital strategy. So it's really a complimentary effort on our part to support small businesses in a region. You say complimentary effort. Does, does this mean they get a discount or free? No, it's pro bono. Oh, pro free. Bono. Pro bono. Wow. Pro bono. Whoa. All right, Josh, what do you guys do? Because I have two nonprofits I'm associated with. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I may have to uh, submit. sign up. Yeah, exactly. Submit my, uh, my pitch opportunity. Yeah. I mean, something that I came to value later on in the life cycle of my still young, it's only five years old company, is that collaboration with the right companies or individuals benefits both parties involved. And our our tagline at Dedicated Designs is um, intentional marketers and purposeful creatives. So we have intentionality with our marketing. We're not just gonna like take ad dollars from a client and just deploy it on Google and social media without much thought behind it, which is what a lot of agencies do. And same with purposeful creatives. Um, I mean, we we want to design with a purpose, not just like to sling products like on the internet, but like we wanna put thought and time into what we're doing. And that is what stood out to me about 
Kenneth and his team at KJ2 Productions is that they have a lot of the same values that we have. And so picture passion really just flowed from that in that like we both want to be intentional and purposeful with what we do. And so for us, like KJ is talking about, I mean, they're great storytellers and so are we, but in a totally different way. And we need their amazing content to help tell our client's story. And so what we decided on is they would take care of a lot of the or all the media and then we would come and partner with the business that we select in picture passion and figure out what are they lacking is it you know a lot of these businesses have you know been around for a couple of years and are doing fairly well but what would take them to the next level is it a total new like website with a with a store with a storefront or like an e-store do they need better social media content do they need help with their seo because you know no one can like find them on search, mm-hmm. um, and so some some companies that we work with, we might provide all of those services pro bono. Um, the company that we picked, uh, To Be Glass, for our first um, round of Picture Passion, their website's awesome, but they need help with some like graphic design because they do a lot of events. Um, so our graphic design team will handle that for them. Um, they need help with their SEO. So like we're going to create content and do case studies because. They create these amazing pieces of glass. Like, I mean, they all the way down from these small, like really cool pumpkins that you can purchase like around Halloween and Thanksgiving to custom art pieces that are 30, 40, 50, 70 thousand dollars. Oh wow. That are the centerpiece of like a hotel lobby or someone's home or something like that. And those, especially those pieces, have a story to tell. Um, and they need not only KJ's team to show it on video and photography, but us to write case studies about like, you know, what clients can experience, what can they expect to experience when they're working with a company like 2B Glass. Hmm. It sounds like somebody that should be on the Mark Haney show too, 2B yeah. Glass. I'm, I'm coming after you 2B Glass. <laughs> um, okay, so walk me through what this is. Your office is in Midtown, right? Yeah. And KJ, you're in the, uh, where's your office at? We're downtown, downtown now. Yeah. We're downtown so they, did you meet at one of your guys' offices and then there's a pitch that happens there? Yeah, so what we did was we, put this initial submissions out. So there were online submissions. Okay. We have a landing page and uh, people were able to do their initial submissions. Um, once we got all of those, there was a deadline. We got all those submissions in. We made um, an overarching decision as to we're gonna finally uh, come down, you know, create some finalists. So I think we had eight finalists out of all the submissions. Um, out of those finalists, we had them come in. Uh, we did it at our office. We had them come in. We brought on uh, Lynette Hall from the City Economic Development Department. And um, and then we had a panel of decision makers. And we had them all come in and pitch over two days. And they literally came in. And, and one of the unique companies, I, ironically, was these two little kids. So cool. Mark, you have to see these guys. They're called. They, they have this app. And ironically, I saw it on ABC News 10 two days ago. Um, these kids created this app called Jerry and it's a geriatric, you know, short for geriatrics. Okay. These two young 16, I was like, they were juniors in high school. I think. Yeah. Maybe. 15 and 16 year old kids. Most professional kids walked in with suits wow. on and literally, you know, pitched the crap out of us. Right. Had a great on this concept, had a great pitch. And it's this app that is a geriatric, it's called Jerry, but it's an app for, um, that basically engages with elders, mm-hmm. elderly folks. So they came up with this concept during COVID when their grandfather was in um, in the hospital, they couldn't visit him. So they came up with this concept, how do you engage with your grandparents, you know, the elderly. So they came up with this app and it's basically a an app that just creates conversation. Oh, and yeah. I swear, these kids are probably gonna be you know, I'm trying to figure out, we didn't pick them It's as like a, a private finalist. social media type thing where can you have more than one, is it back and forth two way or is it? It's an app, so it's 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 AI based. Uh-huh. So you have, you sign up your grandparents or your or your parents and they talk to Jerry on the phone. And it's, it's just A, it's to keep them company. B, it can be used to keep their mind like sharp. Uh, but they've been testing it at different um, care facilities around the area and wow. th- they're, they're in stage one, but it has a lot of promise. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Sounds yeah. like uh, somebody that we should know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I, yeah, this yeah. is someone that I, I even thought about for, for Growth Factor, just get these guys in because they are gonna be, I mean, we all said that after the pitch, we was like, we're, we're probably making a bad decision by not selecting them because these guys are probably gonna be the next billionaires. Yeah, you know? well, interesting. So you 
you narrowed it down. You had the pitch competition. You narrowed it down with some finalists to pitch, and mm -hmm. then you chose the glass company chose to the be glass. glass. Company. Yep. And then the process from there is you you get to decide how much to give them in marketing. Yeah, so we did an so assessment. Guys, yeah, yeah, we did an assessment on what they need, like Josh was was describing. What is it specifically that they need? Um, the services that we're providing for us, we're, what we're doing is we're doing an entire um, social media campaign and shooting a commercial for them and then also doing product photography. So our services alone are probably valued about $40,000 oh, of wow. in-kind uh, services. And so we're actually shooting, we've done already done a site visit, we're actually shooting their, uh, start to shoot their production next week. Um, and then Josh's team, once we're done with all the production work, Josh's team will activate the services they're gonna provide. So it's really a, you know, an in-depth process for us. I mean, because it's really, you know, we're taking a lot of time mm -hmm. to kind of figure this out. So it's not just kind of this, you know, you know, hand over a, a bag of gifts. It's yeah. literally a thought process is really going in through. The, the kicker of all of this, and I'll be very transparent, for us is that we have 100% creative control over the project. That's the one caveat for us. And what that does for our team it allows us to really, our best work is usually done when we have a lot of creative latitude. Mm -hmm. We have some of these clients, and it's great. I mean, we have some clients that are very rigid as to what we can do. They have kind of a vision, and we're kind of left in a box, so we have to operate within a box. And that's fine, we're agile. But our best work usually yields the best product when we have the opportunity to really create um, from a creative standpoint, just you know, have a blank canvas. So that's one of the caveats of it is yeah. that that's the self-interest side of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, that makes sense <clears throat> because you you want it to be great, and if you've got your name associated with it, sure. it's you know let's let's have it be the best we can be. So you're giving away a, roughly forty grand on this one, and and you guys are giving your guys your time's not cheap. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's probably going to be between twenty and thirty thousand. Yeah. Like of and it's and it's it's a longer term relationship. But we'll yeah. probably be working with them until the end of the year, just mm -hmm. because the SEO is such a monster in terms of wow. getting performance up. It doesn't happen right yeah. away. It's interesting because um, the generosity is off the charts. One, number one, the people learn a lot when they go through these type of processes too. So all the people that went through the process got um, they brushed up on you know on their on their business. I know when you go to pitch you brush up on your business and you start picking your own business apart when you have to pitch it. Yeah. It's like, oh, I better get my messaging straight. Um, that was interesting yeah. because that's one thing I didn't anticipate. And I don't know if you did, but I didn't anticipate the coaching that would be involved. So, I mean, I, I know we're all part of EO and we do a lot of like experience share. And so many of the finalists that came in were talking about problems that either one of us or both of us have encountered in our companies. And we, they were very open to us just talking about how we handled that in our company, not necessarily telling them what to do, but like, yeah, like we experienced that. Here's how we handled it. And it was cool to provide value in that way on a coaching level, even if we didn't pick them. I think they still found a lot of value from that. And hopefully they took some of those nuggets and it's helping their company right now. Interesting. It was one of the, one of the things that he's saying that, that we wanted to provide as a team is what, the challenges that we're having. That was really a, a very therapeutic actually session for us because it was like, yeah, I remember going through that, right? And a lot of these companies are just really on the verge of true success, but they have just one overarching issue that's, that, that, that's holding them back. And we were able to discover that in the pitches. So what we decided as a team is, even if we didn't pick them, to follow up with some, you know, whether it's connections to the city's uh, grant opportunities or yeah. connecting, like we connected uh, the kids um, that created the Jerry app. They were talking about some of the hospitals they want to get involved with. You know, they mentioned UC Davis and I wind up connecting them with one of the UC Davis um, execs just to make sure wow. that we just had some follow through for them to, in order to kind of keep them pushing and, and kind of overcome that, that challenge that they had. So it really was, uh, you know, for us, it was, uh, a, a full extended of our services was just really like it, it gave us an opportunity to really understand the challenges that some of these businesses are going through and, and what we have gone through ourselves and how do they circumvent that. So it's almost been like a mentor process as well. And then are you, are you gonna do this like once a year <clears throat> or is this a one-time thing? What's so our, our, our process is that we wanna have this as an ongoing, we had toyed around with it every quarter. 
you know, maybe twice a year, but it's going to be an ongoing campaign. The, the, this is our first one. So really trying to get through this first one to make sure that we kind of have our, 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 our wheels turning, so to speak. Um, but it's going to be an ongoing campaign. And you said there's a place to sign up. So for ongoing, let's say the next one comes out next year. Um, is there a website people go to where they can kind of see this or where they'll sign up for the next one? Yeah, Josh, you want to tell them about the landing page? Yeah, we can put it in the show notes, okay. the link to it. But yeah, there's a landing page. Um, I think it's pitchyourpassion.today. Okay. Um, and they can go there, fill out the information, and it goes right to us. And then they'll be notified if they're selected for the final. We we, we said probably 10 at the most. Mm-hmm. Um, for this round, applications close on July 9th at like 11.59. Oh, okay. So it's still open right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. Um, so, and I don't know when this is going to air, but I'm not sure when it's going to, Scott, when is this going to air? We'll make sure it airs before that. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay. So July 9th and it's uh pitch your passion dot today. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to like broaden out this conversation for a second, if it's okay, because you brought up something, I think KJ, that, uh, you, you both brought up uh, things that I want to b- talk about on the show. You connected somebody to UC Davis. You had a connection. You, mm-hmm. you showed some love to uh, to somebody that to a young entrepreneur. And I feel like Sacramento is that kind of place. I mean, and some people describe us as a midwestern town, it kind of that's on you know that's over toward the coast a little <laughs> bit. But Sacramento, you know, I've been talking a lot about you know showing love to fellow entrepreneurs. And that's beginning to happen. And that was really the theme of GFX last year. That's the theme of GFX this year. Again, it's building the backyard advantage. And you guys are both members of the entrepreneurs organization. So and you th- when you think about um, the way we are as Sacramento entrepreneurs and what's happening in our region today in terms of entrepreneurship, maybe just give me, let's step back from 30,000 square foot or 30,000 foot and uh, what do you see happening? You guys are newer members to EO, mm-hmm. um, but but you can still see the change because you've been in this business community for a while. Yeah, I mean, I'll start with collaboration is is huge among the successful companies that I've seen. Um, anyone that I've ever talked to, whether it's another agency. So, I mean, I've got good friends who own other agencies here in the area that do similar things that to what we do and, and very different things, and which is great because you know, if if our pipeline's full, we want to make sure that whoever comes our way has a good experience, even if it's not directly with us. And it's nice to have those other agencies to refer them to. Um, I also just feel like in the best way, a lot of entrepreneurs here in Sacramento don't take themselves too seriously in the terms of like, they're always up to have a conversation with someone about their business. Oh, and no, you're not uptight. Yeah, yeah. Ex- yeah, exactly. That like, you know, they're, they're open to having a conversation about like, Hey, like, you know, I, you know, I'm ready to hire my first employee. Like, like how did, how did you do that? And like, they're willing to share that experience. Um, and I also feel like there's a sense of pride, um, of being a Sacramento entrepreneur. I think like you were saying for a while, people almost didn't want to say like, I, you know, my company's in Sacramento, or like I live in Sacramento. It, it, you know, the Bay Area was like the shining star of Northern California. And now I really feel like that's shifted, especially since the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And people are very proud of what we have here in Sacramento, not just the companies that we have, um, but the amenities and like the activities that we have, just with all the outdoor activities that you can do in like Placer County um, and over in Folsom. I, it's, I, I think Sacramento is just hitting its next growth stride in terms of attracting even more amazing companies and, and people. Yeah, what's your perspective? You know, it's, 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 it really echoes what Josh is saying. I, I, when I first opened my business here, I was afraid to say I'm from Sacramento. You know, I didn't, I didn't label Sacramento as a connection to my business. And now that's totally shifted. I, you know, Sacramento was always known for as its government town. You know, if you weren't in the legislative process, if you weren't a state employee, you weren't cool, right? That's mm-hmm. that's where the cool kids hung out. And I've 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 since have seen a lot of creative agencies that are in this region, and it's it's really made me proud to really be Sacramento proud. You know, we mm-hmm. we use that term a lot, but going back to the whole idea of 
creative collaboration, that is essential for business. You know, we, we get to this point where we want to be so territorial and we want to look at like, oh, I'm going to get my piece of the pie, but there's only so much share out there. And, you know, our biggest focus is that we are going to be good at our vertical and we're going to find things that we don't do well. We're going to find advocates and our ambassadors to do that. And I think once you start to find that synergy with other people, um, people that are willing to collaborate with you, it, it the, the end result is the the ultimate benefactor of it is the person, the business that you're servicing. Mm -hmm. You know, now they feel like they're serviced by organizations as opposed to, you know, if they need, you know, three or four services, if they have to go to different companies to do it, if they have, you know, kind of collaborative effort of one company coming in and say, I have these partners that can help with these other avenues of what you need. That is the biggest, that is like the biggest upside for them. And that's really what we try to do. You know, Josh and I will have these constant conversations where, hey, I have a client that needs your services. It's like a tee up to him, right? It's almost like an alley oop because mm -hmm. I'm bringing him in and I am already have a trusted relationship with him. So it makes it so much easier for the client because the then now they're getting service better and they're getting, you know, ultimately they're getting a be better product. Mm -hmm. And I think that once you start, I see that happening a lot more in this in, in, in this region. I didn't see that. Maybe I was oblivious to it before. Yeah. Um, I think even going through things like EO, um, Growth Factory, you know, being a part of Growth Factory to see that network of of individuals that are really striving to help. You know, what do they say? I, I messed up the term yesterday. Rising, oh, all, rising seas, yeah, raise all boats. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's really the concept of it. If it's, if we all kind of look at, you know, if we're supporting our own region, now we're doing the best for. I mean, that means companies are being successful here. Um, we used to get this notion as well. We were, we had to always advocate or fight for what we do because people are like, oh, I'm going to go to San Francisco to hire a media company or I got to go to L.A. to hire. And it's like, why? We have creative people here that can do the job. You know, we're local. We're going to we're going to we're going to service you better. You know, we're you know, so once we started to, to, to defeat that narrative, I think it made me more open to look at other partners in this region to partner with and reach out. You know, sometimes you'll get people like, nah, I'm good. And that's fine. That's maybe not the next right mix for you. But when you find those that are like, yes, let's figure out a way, how do we collaborate and utilize our services together? It's it's a beautiful, like it's a beautiful marriage. Well, you guys, are, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say like, I, I actually feel like ever since we partnered up, I feel like having them on our side is like a superpower just because, I mean, I think we're probably the only two companies in the area that have such a public partnership. Um, I mean, two first class companies that can provide great services to any business basically um, is a superpower. I mean, I just, mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel so confident knowing that when we're going into a discovery meeting with a client and we're talking about like telling their story via video, coming up with ad creative, it's like, oh yeah, like KJ too. Like, I don't even worry about it. It's just like, I know that like they have our back and we'll treat our client the way that we would treat them. That's cool. Well, no, you guys are newer members to the entrepreneurs organization. What prompted you to join and how, and what's been the experience? You Mark told me a lot about it. So I'm always talking about it. <laughs> I know, I know you, you've actually given me some insight, but a number of folks, uh, you know, Todd Bolenbach uh, was a big advocate to get me over. Chris Johnson oh, yeah. was another one. I think, um, you know, I've, I've done a number of leadership um, cohorts, ALF, I've done NMI Emerging Leaders Program, I've done Leadership SAC, I've done just a number of programs that's really helped me professional, like professional development. <clears throat> but the unique thing about EO is like, that's my tribe. It's like literally the, the conversations that we have is so core to what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis you know, as an entrepreneur. And I feel, you know, going through forums, I, I literally feel like it's therapy for me. Yeah. Because I, they- Deeper they can, conversations. Deeper, yeah. deeper conversations. And things that, you know, obviously there's a lot, large level of confidentiality, which I can appreciate, but it just has this hold on me to understand that what I'm saying in those small group forums is gonna be thrust upon people's ears and they're like, I've done this before. Let me help you circumvent this, right? Let me help you guide your way through it. And it's it's 
it's really, I, like I said, it's my tribe. I, I, I'm so blessed that, A, I've had the opportunity to be exposed to it and was accepted to it. And, and really, you know, it's 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 unique because even the folks that are in my forum. Who's in your forum anyway? I don't even know. Um, are you guys in the same forum? No. No. Oh. no. I, I uh, Derek Holland. Oh yeah, uh, he's doing my uh, he's doing my cabinets. He's doing your my cabinets, garage. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. did my last garage too. The closet um, doctor, you guys. <laughs> yeah, just a just a EJ um, yeah. is is new in our. We have two new individuals. It's just a you know, and it's ironically, if I looked at that kind of consortium of, of, of individuals, it's like it's not necessarily people that I would probably be friends with outside yeah. of it. It's a, but we have this really core nucleus. Rob Bowles called you know, text me last night just to check on me. And uh, just out of the blue, and he sent me a picture. I had went to Mardi Gras this year, and I brought him back a uh, a Zulu coconut. And um, he had sent me a picture in his office, and he said he, this coconut was prominent there in his thank you card that I sent to him. And it was just like you know, it's just a a really um, strong group of individuals that all have the same goals, you know, in some capacity. Um, although we're all in different businesses, I know I feel like. The forums are really carefully um, uh, curated um, to really kind of support your overall goals. Like, what are you trying to do? Where you are in your career stage? Some forums are probably more seasoned individuals. Some are a lot of startups. But I just find it very fascinating to be in a group of individuals that I can pretty much talk about the the crap that I deal with on a day. Being an entrepreneur is not easy, Mark. Yeah. You know this. Yeah, my forum has been together about. 10, 12 years, like Uriah Faber's in my mm -hmm. forum, Tyler Smith, some people have built some great companies. And it's inspired me to, I mean, it inspired me to do the show, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing the show when I joined EO and then start, you know, hanging around people that really are helping other people in entrepreneurship. I'm like, well, wow, maybe I'll start a show. Yeah. Um, what, how did you get into EO and uh, what's your, you're a new guy yeah, in the EO. Yeah, I, I actually haven't even joined the forum yet. Oh, that, you haven't? That happens oh. in July. Okay, um, yeah. I've been in the accelerator group um, okay. for the last two years and Todd got me into that. And that was, it was eye opening for me because I remember the first day, kind of like what KJ said is like, the room was like, oh my gosh, like these are my people. You know, I, I come from education. So a lot of my, a lot of my friends and coworkers before I started my company obviously were teachers. And, and that is a totally different mindset to be a teacher than it is to be an entrepreneur. And it was so nice to connect. And, and over the course of two years, I attribute a lot of our success to what I learned in the accelerator program. Just having the four learning days was, it was just, you know, you're, I feel lucky that now I'm in the position where I'm like, you know, people say working on the business. Mm -hmm. At the time I joined Accelerator, I was definitely in the business still. And it was nice to have, at least, even if it was just four days a year, those four dedicated days to really dive in and work on things that helped us scale and helped me get out of the everyday, like, you know, rigmarole. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna ask for some free advice here. Um, so I'm working with EO. I'm, we're all members of EO. We're all, you You and I are part of the growth factory. You're, we're getting you into the growth factory. You're coming to GFX. But GFX this year is gonna be a lot bigger. It'll be at the same place in 2023. It'll be at the grounds in Roseville. And then in 2024 and beyond, we're going to take it to Sacramento and it's going to blow up a lot bigger. We're, we're in partnerships talks to really put nice. it on the map for Sacramento. That's great. But for this year, EO has said, yeah, we want a, a bigger presence at the event. And so we're talking about having, it's like for anybody who's listening, it's like a trade show type of uh, event with this year's two stages. There'll be a... Uh, a VIP area that will be, uh, I think EO is gonna sponsor the e, the the, um, the VIP area. And then there's a there's a morning breakfast for investors, there's awards, backyard awards uh, mm -hmm. at lunch, and you know, all kinds of big presenters. We're gonna have the guy, that, the guy that's been on the board of Tesla for 16 years, and others are coming in that are well-respected entrepreneurs. Um, and, and some from locally here in Sacramento too. Okay, so here's my challenge to you guys. Help me find the methodology to get the EO well represented at this event. I think last year we probably had 10 or 20 EO people come to GFX, but this year I wanna get all of EO there and 
have them feel sort of an ownership in the pride of what's going on in Sacramento. And, you know, part of that's just showing up. Mm -hmm. So how do we get all the EO people there to be a part of EO's, um, I guess, uh, image at GFX? I mean, first, I think it should be like a calendared event, just how like anything else on EO, any of the like member outings or any of like the learning series, how it's an actual event. Mm -hmm. I think if we could get it on the stage of EO Global so that um, other chapters, either just locally for this year around Northern California, just within maybe like a three or four hour driving radius. Love it. Um, and then once it goes even bigger in Sacramento, I mean, it seems like that would be something that people kind of like how they're doing up in Seattle, um, having an event where it's a can't miss, like it shouldn't miss opportunity because you're like getting to see cutting edge companies like pitch yeah. themselves and learn if, if you're in the cutting edge, if you're in a cutting edge company or just a brand new company, just it's a great place for you to learn. So. Well, I think getting on the official calendar. I like that. John Bissell, he took his, he's been on the show a couple of times. He took his company public a couple of years back, Origin Materials. Mm -hmm. He's going to speak. I think he's going to join EO too, finally. It's been a while since he, uh, I've been talking to him about it for a long time. But anyway, uh, any, ideas from you, KJ, before I, yeah, before I wrap up. I, I think, you know, it's a good concept. I think, you know, getting, EO, as you know, has, you know, a robust calendar. I mean, a lot of things are popping up in, in if, in a perfect world, I wish I can attend them all, right? So you have to balance yourself. Obviously, we know most folks in EO are very busy. Can their their personal and business calendars are already pretty full. I think if you engaged EO, maybe in the process of having EO as a panel mm, um, yeah. involved as a panel, I think we're gonna have I think we're gonna have them uh, speaking. Okay, yeah. so I think if getting them physically involved in the capacity of because the, the the unique thing that I have seen about EO is that people love to help. You know, there's this there's this idea of 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 literally, you know, trying to encourage or help, you know, your kind of fellow compadre. So I think if there's a way to really actively engage EO or some EO membership um, and give them a task, like this is yeah. your this is you your know, area, this is your responsibility. I'm going to task this off to you. I think we take ownership mm -hmm. when we get delegated certain things, delegated certain things. So. Um, I think just trying to figure out a way, I, I you know, I, I love to be involved in a lot of things like this, you know, just from being an entrepreneur, because I'm looking at how do I help others that, it's like paying it forward, you mm -hmm. know, so figuring out a way that, you know, EO can really be actively involved, not just kind of like this surface level process, you know, give them something they, you know, a portion of it that they sponsor, mm -hmm. so they can have some of their members be actively involved in running that section of it. Yeah. Um, because it's a large important, I mean, this, these were, what these companies, these founders that are going through this process eventually will be EO. Right. They look at the startups, look up to yeah. you guys and the, you know, the other folks have done it already. In EO. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's good to have you there cause you're inspiring. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about putting together like a little champions committee to, so we can kind of go champion it yeah. throughout the EO mm -hmm. universe. It could be Sacramento's flagship event. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how other chapters do it, but I mean, how could it be that, you know, we've created an event as EO or helped, you know, take mm -hmm. what you guys have already started and put it on the map. Like I said, so like EO Global can see it. Yes. Like, like look what Sacramento did. Like this is an amazing event that has 10,000 people coming to it now. Yep, I love it. Okay, final words, gentlemen. Anything uh, before we uh, before we wrap? I, I just really want to reiterate this concept of appreciating number one, Josh here for number one, being a friend, um, but also just being, you know, this collaborative partner that I, that I feel I want to call it. Um, I'll summarize it. Summarize it by saying, it's like a feather in the hat, you know. And what he was saying earlier about when he goes into meetings, I have much more confidence now when I go into discovery meetings with clients to say, hey, you know, whatever we can produce or whatever we're going to produce for you, we have an avenue now to strategically distribute it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of the biggest downfalls of us. We'll go out and create this really awesome content, and then we'll go to their YouTube site, and there's like seventeen views or 20 views and it's like we did this amazing work and it just hasn't hit the node right i have a feather in my hat now knowing that dedicated designs is literally like a partner for us and that partnership really gives me confidence in pitching uh, ideas to clients so I, I just really appreciate having that friend and also having that partnership with uh, dedicated designs yeah i mean same for me i mean i already talked about how i just feel like having them is 
like having a superpower, but KJ is, I mean, he is a mentor to me, um, just seeing like how he's grown his agency. Um, and yeah, our friendship, I mean, just, just having someone to talk to, like, you know, going through similar things at a similar time in our lives. Um, and you know, the entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur can be lonely at times and you don't necessarily know who you can talk to about your problems. And, um, it's just, it's awesome to have him to talk to about things, um, and just call him up or like, let's go, you know, last night we went to dinner and like caught up and talked about things. And it's, yeah, it's, I respect him a ton and, uh, want to be like KJ. Yeah. Who does it? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks guys for coming on the show. Thanks for what you're doing for the Sacramento entrepreneurs, what you're doing for me too. And, um, with GFX and with all the stuff at the growth factory, you know, I, I agree with you. Sacramento has sort of turned the corner. We're working together. A lot of love. I can, I can feel it in this room. And, uh, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having us. And I just appreciate what you've done for the Sacramento area in terms of just enabling and fostering entrepreneurship. Thank you. I appreciate it, Josh. Thanks, KJ. Thank you. Great conversation with uh, KJ and Josh today. And I think one of the things that uh, stood out to me was our discussion about the Entrepreneurs Organization, EO. I think you've heard me talking about EO before, but now we heard about it from some other people that that are newer to EO. And one of them is coming up through the EO Accelerator and his business has grown so much he's now qualifying to get into EO and then the other one his business is a little bit bigger and he's in EO but EO is this family of entrepreneurs there's about 90 of us in Sacramento and we're broken up into these small groups it's a worldwide organization so you have opportunity to connect with uh, companies and founders from around the globe all over the United States But in Sacramento, there's 90 of us or so, and we're in these small groups, and we end up learning a lot from each other. It's incredible to to think about how EO has changed my life in the the last 10, 11 years. And so if you're thinking, if you're one of those entrepreneurs out there thinking about how do I get plugged in with a group of people that can make me better as a business person, better as a family man, better as a maybe a leader, or even just better personally, EO, uh, again, has made a huge impact on my life. So hopefully that connects you a little bit to some of, some of the opportunities that are in Sacramento today. And to all you out there fighting a good fight for entrepreneurship, fighting a good fight for our freedom, our security, and our way of life, you need to, uh, to know that we appreciate you And, uh, you know, here at Haney Biz, here at the Growth Factory, here on the Mark Haney Show, we're never above you. We're never below you. We're always by your side. Thanks for watching today's show. My goal for every episode is that you find a takeaway, something tangible you can use in your business today. And if you have a comment about a favorite takeaway, feel free to put it in the in the box below. And if you have a, a topic that you'd like me to bring up on the show, don't forget to let me know. And also, Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Because at Haney Biz, we are always by your side.